Hello and welcome to the Aqua Hacking Challenge Great Lakes Nutrient Cycling and Management presentation. My name is Matt Hirsch. I'm the Great Lakes Water Studies Institute coordinator with Northwestern Michigan College. And uh, my background is in molecular microbial ecology and the nitrogen cycle. And I've also worked on research vessels in the oceans for about 10 years. And I am recently started looking at the Great Lakes uh, instead of the oceans, so focusing on freshwater and learning more about it. And my partner for this issue is Sergio. Thank you, Matt. My name is Sergio Pino Jelsic. I am with Ovivo USA. We're a technology provider for the water sector. My expertise and career has been in the wastewater treatment plants, specifically on biological nutrient removal. So I'm very happy to be part of this challenge, this group, and I will contribute with my experience with biological treatment as well as technologies to monitor right, uh, nitrogen and phosphorus. So happy to, to be here. Uh, you can see my picture. My hobby is percussion. I play once a year at WebTech for a group called Jamming for Water. So you are at WebTech next week. I'll see you there. I'll transfer now to my colleague, Chloe. Thank you, Sergio. Uh, so uh, my name is Chloe Lejoie. I'm the Natural Edge Program Manager at Watersheds Canada. We are a nonprofit and a charity based out of Perth, Ontario, and we work with uh, waterfront property owners and community members and municipalities to um, help protect the freshwater or Canada's freshwater. So I actually run a shoreline naturalization program, and we work with, again, waterfront property owners, municipalities to restore shorelines and bring it back to a natural state by planting a selection of trees, shrubs, and wildflowers. Uh, so we do have a nature-based solution, which slows overland runoff, increases infiltration, and reduces nutrient loading, um, and to help with the impact that humans have on our lakes. So I know my colleagues and I are very excited to work with all of you on this water issue and to see the solutions that you'll come up with. So what is the challenge for this year? How can we innovate to better monitor and detect nutrients in nutrient cycling in the Great Lakes system? So what is the big motivation for this, right? For the last few decades, right, we know that human activities has really accelerated the transfer of nutrients from the land into the receiving water bodies, right? As we ex, you know, accelerate the pace, we're putting the environment to stress. And certainly, you know, we're finding certain lakes, like the Great Lakes, under very compromised uh, conditions from an ecological perspective, public health perspective, and even economical development, right? So that's the motivation, how we can really get into more comprehensive monitoring, uh, planning to understand the situation, get more data, visibility, right? And then from there, develop uh, insight and then ultimately actions to make sure that we don't push the environment to a point where it cannot self-regulate. So the U.S. and Canada both work on monitoring the water quality in the Great Lakes. And there is a report that comes out every couple of years called the State of the Great Lakes Report. And it hits different topics of concern with the Great Lakes. And one of them is nutrients. So the, the question is a little tricky here. Are nutrients in the lakes at acceptable levels, right? It's not just our nutrients high or our nutrients low. They're high in some places and low in other places, which cause different kinds of problems. So in Lake Erie, for instance, the nutrient levels are pretty high usually, and you get this bright green water, cyanobacteria, uh, algae blooms, and then in other lakes you get lower nutrients, lower productivity, and that might be bad for the environment for other reasons. So it, it really varies from lake to lake. Uh, the, this is another SNP from the Great Lakes report from 2022. And nutrients are an interesting thing because you can't see them going into the water, but they have such a huge impact on, on the, the whole ecosystem, uh, starting from primary productivity to consumers and then up to bigger things like fish that are really important for the economy of the Great Lakes as well. Not to mention uh, swimming and the health of the waters for, uh, for nuisance algae or uh, bacteria or other, other things that might impact our enjoyment and ability to utilize uh, and maintain healthy Great Lakes. All right, the description. We know nutrients is essential for life. 
too much is not too good, too little is not too good, right? How we keep that ecosystem well balanced, right? So in this particular case, we're looking at two major, two major species, nitrogen, such as nitrate, nitrite, ammonium, and phosphorus, in this case, phosphate, right? So those are the main targets that we want to monitor and we want to develop innovative, right, means to make sure that we get uh, data from these uh, Great Lakes as well. So nutrient loading, right, affects primary productivity. Too much phosphorus, for instance, lead to eutrophication, algal bloom, fish die off. There are too many elements, right, that will impact a receiving water body if nutrients are not well balanced in that uh, ecosystem. So what are the sources of those nutrients to the Great Lakes, right? There is a natural, you know, boundary that naturally moves nutrients around part of the, the, the nutrient cycle. But then you have the anthropogenics, right? The human activity has really accelerated, again, this transfer of nutrients from the land into the receiving water bodies, right? Two main uh, sources, one is called the point source pollution. For example, a wastewater treatment plant discharging into a lake. That's what I do, right? Pre-treatment for that. But also non-point pollution point, right? Example, right? Uh, runoff from uh, agriculture, right? Farmers, right? With fertilizers, all that nutrient get potentially run right into a receiving water body. So a description of this issue or challenge or is to find the gaps in knowledge and the gaps in the technical ability regarding nutrients in the Great Lakes. So how do we study nutrients in the Great Lakes? There's two main ways. One is getting discrete samples. So that would, that means getting a, going out onto, onto the lake or on the shoreline and getting a sample of water in a bottle and bringing it back to the lab and getting a really precise measurement from the laboratory. But that may not be representative of the total body of water in, in a thing like a lake. And then another method, which gives you more data, but maybe less precise is called an in situ measurement. So that in situ means uh, in the field, uh, you, get, you can get more readings. You can just put your sensor through the whole water column, get a lot of measurements, um, but you might be uh, limited in the precision or accuracy. And for things like Nitrogen, there are sensors that can measure nitrogen, but for phosphate, they, I don't know that they even exist for that kind of deployment down through the water column of the Great Lakes. Uh, so a couple pieces of the data question that you could look at are the data processing, uh, how to analyze data that's already there, how to disseminate or visualize and report on this data to make it actionable and to do something with the findings. And then modeling and prediction uh, could be another avenue for improving on our ability to understand nutrients in the Great Lakes. Key takeaways, right? So we have a problem right, with nutrient the Great Lakes causing ecological, public health, and economical issues, right? So what tools do we currently have in the toolbox to do this monitoring, detecting nutrients? And more importantly, right, what tools are yet to be developed? This is the call for today, right? What innovative mindset you may have to think about this, how we can improve uh, the deployment of this monitoring planning, right? To eventually have better visibility and develop right actionable insight from there, right? So we're looking forward to working with you based on this. And here's your call to actions. Find that gap in knowledge and find something that interests you. Hopefully it's this nutrient topic and we get to work with you. Uh, in a mentorship capacity to help you develop your idea and find out what the state, state of the art is and what are the best practices for monitoring and detecting nutrients and nutrient cycling. And then think about how you can make it better. Some of the ideas for how you can make it better is better, more reliable instruments, better coverage throughout the Great Lakes, higher accuracy and precision, and more affordable and uh, low cost options. Here's a list of some references and links. So a link to the State of the Great Lakes report from 2022. Uh, the EPA and NOAA from the US side of things, they do a lot of great work on the Great Lakes, as well as uh, in Canada, the Environment and Climate Change uh, Group. There's also university researchers who do a lot of studying on the Great Lakes and a lot out there to explore on this topic. 
So with that, we'll say thank you for your attention. Thank you for your time. And we look forward to working with you, hopefully, in the near future for this Aqua Hacking Challenge. Sergio, do you have anything else to add? Thank you, Matt. Um, yeah, I appreciate your time. I'm really excited to be part of this initiative. I hope this video motivates everybody here to join this challenge for the Great Lakes. And uh, I'm sure that we can move the needle with something innovative out of the box to improve monitoring and detection of nutrients. Um, Chloe, some final word for you from you? Yeah, thank you, Sergio. Uh, I'm also really excited and looking forward to working with everyone um, and to see what solutions you have come up with.